I'm back with another seed haul. So first I wanna start off by telling you guys, look at this packaging. This is from Baker Creek. I already love their seeds, but whenever the packaging looks this cute, I feel like cutting it out and framing it. Anyways, I ordered a few seeds from them and I might have a few more coming in the mail soon but I wanted to go over the varieties that I picked up this time. First off, I get a lot of questions about where I buy my seeds and I honestly buy them everywhere. But my favorite two places are Baker Creek and MI Gardener. Baker Creek has seeds from all over the world so I get cool rare varieties all the time. And MI Gardener also sells heirloom seeds and they're $2 each, which is such a steal. I love ordering from both of those shops and they're ones that I highly recommend. The first is an Alibaba watermelon. The reason I'm focusing so much on melons this time around is because it's heating up a lot here in Arizona and melons are one of the things that I can start planting a lot of in the next few months. So I wanna make sure that I'm stocked up on all the cool varieties. That way I'm ready to go once the time comes to plant them. So this variety says, large plants give heavy yields of oblong fruit weighing to 30 pounds, superbly sweet and crisp. And I mean, look at the color on that. It looks really beautiful. Overall, I think it's a stunning melon. I don't plan to put these in the garden beds because I feel like the vines would just take over everything. So I plan on growing these in grow bags and then letting the vines sprawl out wherever they want. The next one is a silver Yamato watermelon. And it looks like this. It's really pretty. The back says, extremely high quality texture and complex sweet flavor have made silver Yamato an instant classic. Early to mature, it is great for a range of climates and at six to 10 pounds, perfect for the home or market gardener. I think this variety is still small enough to where I might be able to trellis it on a cattle panel, but I might also sow some in grow bags just to make sure that they don't get too heavy. I already have several melons starting to develop, which is really exciting. So I wanna add more and look at the color. It's so pretty. It looks like it's whitish silver on the inside. So I'm excited to try it and see what the taste is like. That's one of my favorite things to do, especially during the hottest months of the year, is test out different melons from the garden and tell you guys what I think, what I recommend them. Is it worth purchasing the seeds? And this variety is no exception to that. This one looks extremely similar, but it's different. I feel like I'm doing that whole makeup thing where you have two pink lipsticks and you're like, I know it looks the same, but it's totally different. But this is called a Yamato Cream Watermelon. And this one has a little bit more of a yellow tinge to it. But, but let's be honest here, it does look pretty similar. This one says, buttercream colored flesh is a bit citrusy, sweet and complex. Flavor has been described as Asian pear and apples with light citrus tones. Makes a refreshing, sweet, almost pear-like juice. That sounds delicious. It's so much more different from the description on this variety. So I can't wait to compare the two once I'm finally able to harvest them. But look how pretty that looks. I haven't had a pear drink in I don't know how long, so I should definitely make some once I am able to harvest this variety. Next up is a lemon drop watermelon. And it looks like this. It looks really adorable. And I think this one would be perfect for any sort of trellis. Like striking gold, this glorious gilded watermelon is pocket sized with a vigorous growing habit. Each vine blossoms and provides one to two pound fruit with flavor that is unparalleled, candy sweet and crisp textured. That sounds delicious to me. I feel like varieties like this look so ornamental in every single garden. And the best part about them is that they're ornamental and edible. I remember last season having my trellises filled with personal melons and it looks so whimsical. They were honestly one of my favorite things to harvest and I love trellising melons of any sort. Well, when they're able to be trellised because some varieties are just way too large, but I think it just makes everything easier because oftentimes whenever they're super ripe, they'll just fall off the vine. So I had them supported with these DIY macrame hangers that I'm going to make again this year to show you guys. And whenever the melons would get super ripe, they would just fall on their own and be caught by the hangers. And that made my job so much easier. Also, because I've been dealing with a little bit of a rodent issue, whenever I have vines trailing along the ground, I'm always scared that the rodents are gonna go out there and start eating at my melons. So trellising them solves that problem until they figure out how to climb them. But for now, it kind of solves it. But that's that variety. And the last seed that I purchased is the toothache plant or the Spilanthes ac ac acmella, asmella or the Spilanthes plant. I don't know how to say the second part, but this is a yellow toothache plant. It says it's an annual, incredibly potent canary colored flowers retain their numbing qualities when dried or made into tinctures. The main reason I purchased this one, I know that it's medicinal. I know that it's probably really good for your health, but it's because I went to Vegas on a girl's trip and I tried that drink from the Cosmopolitan that my sister-in-law bought me. Oh, I forget the name, but she introduced me to this one drink where 
you bite the flower, the flower tastes disgusting by the way, it's really bitter, it's just not the best, but then you drink the drink and it starts changing flavor and it winds up being a really nice citrusy refreshing drink. So I can't wait to grow these and then I don't really know how to make drinks. Maybe I can just try and come up with my own concoctions, but that's where I first tried this plant and I love that drink. Not everyone in the girls trip really liked it because the flower was really bitter, but mine tasted amazing. So I can't wait to try and recreate it or recreate some sort of version of it. But this was a little showstopper that came with the drink was the flower that made your taste buds go crazy. And I've also heard it's really good for other medicinal purposes, but that's really the main reason I got it. Last but not least, I got a free seed with my order and this is the Thornburns Terracotta Tomato. And it looks like this. I can't wait to grow it because I get excited whenever I get tomato and pepper plants, especially right now, because this month I'm gonna start some more seeds for those varieties to plant during monsoon season here in Arizona. So this one says, honey brown skin, orange pink flesh, and green seed mass. This is an eye-catching slicer with an out of this world flavor. And that sounds lovely, so I can't wait to grow it in my garden. And those are all the seeds that I bought for now. <laughs>